Okay, so this is our first lesson, um, and it's module 1.1, and what we're going to discuss today are some things that you need to know before getting into Adobe Illustrator. We'll talk about bitmaps and other raster graphics file types. We will discuss anti-aliasing. We'll also touch on resolution including print resolution and screen resolution and implications of high and low resolution images. We'll also talk about vector graphics, what they are and how they are used, and we'll get started with vector objects. So first off, raster graphics. Um, raster graphics are bitmapped file types, and each image is a map of bits or dots like you see on the screen. Um, this is a blown up version. As the computer reads a bitmap, the file tells the computer what each little color or what color each little bit in the map is supposed to look like. And then the graphic processor displays that color or shade. For example, this 1970 Dodge Challenger appears to have clean lines and smooth colors. And as we zoom in on this wheel, we can see that the lines are jagged the smooth color gradients are small squares of variation rather than a, a nice subtle or smooth line. Round and smooth lines look rough. Diagonal lines appear as stair steps and smooth colors are not smooth at all. They look like blocks of, of little blocks of color. You may be familiar with uh, some bitmap file types such as JPEG uh, which is the Joint Photographic Experts Group file format. Uh, the GIF or GIF, depending on your geographic vernacular, uh, the graphics interchange format, and then the PNG, and there are a bunch of other ones like actual bitmap files or PICT files or TIFF, uh, some EPS files are bitmapped. A word about anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is the gradual steps between colors or color values that make an image look smooth. Uh, without anti-aliasing, you get little jagged borders on your image, and even zoomed out, the edges look jagged and rough. With anti-aliasing, the edge changes from the jagged borders to are steps of hue or value between the borders, and as you zoom out, the edge looks smooth. The resolution is related to the number of the little bits in an image. Specifically uh, for printers, what, how a printer works is it pours out little dots of colored ink onto the page through the, the nozzles on the, on the cartridges. A monitor will essentially turn on little pixels of, pixels of colored light in the screen. And so you see a representation of that. Print resolution is the quality of an image that will be printed out. Typically noted in how many dots per inch or DPI the image will be and it is limited by the resolution the printer can adequately print. When referring to print dimensions you may hear the image's physical size with the resolution such as 5 by 7 inches and 300 DPI. As you can see here, there's some variations in the print resolution. The image on the far left is very low resolution, like you might see in a newspaper. And then the sketch on the right is the uh, original sketch that I did. Think of it this way. Uh, your printer is going to print colors in this one inch by one inch square box. The higher number in your resolution, the more dots of color in the box. So on the left, again, the lower resolution DPI is going to look blocky and rough. And then on the right, higher resolution DPI is going to look sharp and smooth. Higher print resolution also allows the printer to use more ink per inch. If you're going to do high resolution printing at home, be prepared to use thicker paper to absorb the ink and also be prepared to buy more ink to replace the cartridge. Another analogy is to think of bed sheets. Bed sheets are usually defined by their thread count or number of threads per square inch. 
As a complete beginner to weaving, I can only make the thick coarse threads on the left, so there are going to be fewer that can fit in an inch. My bed sheet is going to end up like burlap. But expert weavers and expensive weaving machines can make very small, very fine threads and weave them to fit more into an inch. So their thousand thread count Egyptian cotton sheets are so much smoother and more comfortable to sleep on. So the end result is a higher print resolution gives a smoother, sharper, more defined image. Screen resolution is the quality of an image as it is displayed on a screen at 100% of the image size. So typically noted in pixels per inch or PPI and is limited only by the full resolution of the screen. You may hear of some pixel dimensions in a screen size such as 1024 by 768, 720p, 1080p, or 4K. But rather than being the image's resolution, that relates to the total number of independent pixels on the screen that can be displayed. And it usually gives us a maximum for our image without lo looking pixelated or anti-aliased. Often, when you create an image for use on screen, you will not use the entire screen size, but sometimes that is the case. Similar to print resolution, higher screen resolution gives a smooth, sharper, more defined image. Back when I was learning web design, the magic number was 72 ppi, and this is because the typical computer monitor of the day could only display 72 pixels of information per square inch. As technology improved and progressed, we have reached higher standards. Another thing to consider for screen resolution is file size. When you print something in high resolution, you are using more ink, but the paper weighs just a little bit more, and it's barely noticeable. Unless you print a few hundred copies, you won't notice much difference in the weight of the image. When you try to push a high resolution image over the internet, you are limited by the bandwidth or the number of bits of information per second that can be downloaded over the connection. A lower resolution image can be downloaded much faster than a high resolution image, even on faster bandwidth. You may not notice as much on a fast connection, but there is still a delay. The major problem with raster graphics is that once created or scanned, the maximum resolution is set. So for example, when I drew this with pencil on paper over a decade ago, the lines and shading were smooth. I didn't have a great scanner that would give me higher resolution files, so I lost some of the data in the image. And you can see when you scale up the image or zoom in, and it looks, it looks kind of muddy around the colors or the, the, sh the shading. Um, there's a saying in photography and design relating to raster graphics and it is garbage in, garbage out. And what it means is once you decide the settings of your photo or scanned image, if it is low resolution, you won't be able to work miracles and turn it into something high resolution. And next we'll talk about vector graphics. And now we're going to talk about vector graphics. I gave the description of raster graphics first so that you could understand its uses and some of the limitations and that by having that information you should be able to see how important vector graphics are. So what are vector graphics? Vector graphics is the use of geometrical primitives such as points, lines, curves, and shapes or polygons all of which are based on mathematical expressions to represent images in computer graphics. And I'm sorry, it's Wikipedia, but at least it's current, and there was no source apart from that. I just like the way that, they, uh, that somebody put that. So back in high school, before I decided I wanted to go into computer graphics, I played around at home with my dad's old IBM XT computer using the advanced basic programming language. In order to draw graphics on screen, you had to program each line, color, and shape as a statement of code. Vector graphics is the same idea 
Every line, color, and shape are programmed into the illustration as objects. And the good news is, we use a graphical user interface in programs like Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, and Autodesk Sketchbook Designer, so we don't have to know computer programming to, or rely on a bunch of math to know where to put things. How are vector graphics helpful? Why should you learn how to use vector graphics in design? And remember our discussion of raster graphics, the difference between high resolution and low resolution images? Well, with vector graphics, instead of choosing the output ahead of time, be it a website, poster, or a postcard, we can just design the image we want to display. And when it's all drawn, we can scale it up or down to fit the output. We don't have to worry about anti-aliasing, file size, or resolution. Using our bed sheets example, remember that coarse threads from a beginning weaver would yield something like burlap, and fine threads from a master weaver would yield thousand thread count Egyptian cotton. Well, in vector graphics, we simply create the instruction that tells the computer to make a rectangle the size of the bed sheet and fill it with the color of the sheet. In vector graphics programs, like Adobe Illustrator, we can even define the fill to be a pattern, like the one we're looking for, and voila, vector bed sheets. So what about the files? Uh, nowadays, fonts are created and rendered in a vector format. PDF documents are often rendered with vector elements. Another vector format is SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. I think that's a little redundant to say scalable vector because the vector portion implies that the file is scalable, but that's just me nitpicking. Anyway, so SVG is a great format because it can be read by many different vector drawing and editing programs. Also, you'll find EPS files in some cases. Um, especially and PDF files if they're rendered from Adobe Illustrator can also uh, be vector graphic formats. The only drawback to designing in a vector format is that the image must be rasterized to be displayed on your computer monitor or printed on your home or office printer because as you may remember from our discussion of raster graphics printers and monitors have raster graphics resolutions, meaning the image is displayed on your monitor by activating pixels or dots of colored light in your monitor, and printers likewise display little dots of colored ink on the page. So the good news is that the computer does all the work, translating the vector instructions to the monitor or the printer so you don't have to be concerned with the conversion. Also, as one example, when I tried to paste the vector bed sheet example, uh, I crashed PowerPoint. And so I had to rasterize it first in order for it to be even be able to be pasted into the program. Vector objects. So vector graphics are geometrical instructions for the computer, including points, lines, and shapes. But more than that, vector graphics include information regarding the fill color or pattern, the stroke or the line around the outside of the shape, gradients, uh, complex and compound shapes like you see here, masks, and a whole lot of other information in order to get the image to look just right. I hope you'll join me as we explore more of using vector graphics in my course for Adobe Illustrator and I thank you very much for your time. The next section 1.2, we will discuss industrial design with Adobe Illustrator. Bye.